Hey you guys, welcome back. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be first impressioning, first impressioning uh, the app Note Shelf. Now, um, we've done quite a few uh, apps on this channel that are typically used for digital planning. We've obviously done Good Notes. Last time we did Notability. We put our toes into Zoom Notes. We did one for Metamoji, Exodo. This is the first time that I've used this one. Now, I've heard people talk about how much they love this app. And I always in my head, for some reason, when they said Note Shelf, thought they were talking about Notability. And I was I didn't realize that they were two separate things because I obviously wasn't paying attention. So now that I have found it, downloaded it, I was like, okay, I want to give this app a shot. Um, trying to go into it without much expectation. Um, and also trying to, just like the Notability video, not go into it as a blow by blow comparison with good notes but again that is the app that i currently use so obviously there's going to be some comparison and some contrast so let's jump in and get started so right here on this page this is what i get when i first open the app now full disclosure okay i did film this video once already and my capture software was being a butt and only captured like a very limited piece of the screen so this is a second impression video sorry for the clickbait title but when you first log in this is what it looks like i undid everything that i had done before so fresh fresh look um and then it obviously just has like this sample page here and then um you can categorize it has a reasons tab and then if you go to this cog here it's got stuff to where you could change like the interface up at the top got to appreciate that i think i'll just go with the white one and then the way that you bring something in is to hit this plus sign over here on the top right you can import document which is what i'm going to do and then one thing i like about this one um versus notability is that this one actually lets you access your cloud drive so you can do cloud Google Drive. Um, if you have Dropbox installed on your tablet, you would be able to do Dropbox. So we're just going to go into Drive and then I just have this blank square that I like to test everything with. So we're just going to go with the blank square. So let's let's start with just writing. Okay. I, I don't do a lot of writing in my planners um, unless I'm just jotting something down for later and then it's all chicken scratch anyways. But we have four pen options here. I don't know what this favorites. Oh, ooh, okay. Oh, you can add more pens. Maybe. Oh, maybe it's setting colors. Okay, I see you. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't see that in the first go round. Okay, so I did notice this in the first go round too, is that the pencil jitter happens and now it's not dead spaces on my tablet because I can go in and fill them in so see it's not like white space that's horked on my tablet it's the app itself that's doing it um but again I don't write a whole lot so that's really not a deal breaker for me some people it might be so then you've got the fountain pen and then we'll do this one in blue this one I noticed, as opposed to being like a, a fountain pen, like we would expect, like a calligraphy style pen. This one's more of a chisel tip pen, which has its place. Um, but one thing I have noticed with this too, there's no line assistance. It is what you draw is what you have. There's no smoothing or, you know how Procreate will kind of nicen your strokes a little? There's none of that here. And then we've got this one, like a little felt tip. And I'm trying to make them bigger so you can see. Oh, oh, I like this one. And then you have the highlighter, which works as expected. And I'll say you can layer the highlighter too. Looks like a couple of times, actually. That's pretty cool. I thought there was four pens until I made the mistake of doing that favorites thing. Oh, here we go. There's a pencil. 
And then this one does more of like a graphite looking. Looks like you can layer that too. That's pretty neat. Okay, so with the eraser tool, if you double tap it, and this is not meant to be a tutorial on how to use this app, you guys. This is because I filmed this once before, so I figured out a few of the tricks. Uh, but you can tell it to erase, e erase, to erase the entire stroke, which then you only have to tap to get rid of something that you did previously. Um, not a, a must-have, but I I like that feature because if I'm going to erase something, it's typically the entire thing that I just did. Um, and then obviously the highlighters, you have the um, I guess point tip, and then the chisel tip. So there's the chisel, and then this one is the point tip. So this one's like a fat round one, and the other one's like a typical highlighter like you would see in an office supply store. So eraser we talked about. Now, <laughs> here's what I loved about this app, okay? You hit this text thing, hit it, and then tap somewhere. Look, look at Notability had three custom um, font slots. I have not run into an end to this one yet, and I have five now. So if I, like, tap on one of these, I can type however I want to. And then you can go in and change. There was a way. How did I do that before? Hold on a second. I have to remember how I did this. Maybe you could only have five, but then how would you change it? Hold on, I have to, I have to remember this test. Because before, how do I turn off all these pens? Oh, that's a bar that I turned off. Go away, I don't want you. Is it this checkbox? No. Oh! She's fancy. Okay. Hey, that's cool for planners. Check that out. See, it's a good thing I'm filming this twice because I'm learning new stuff. But there's a way to change. The, is it this thing? There it is. Okay, this little paintbrush. So it brings up this screen and then you can change the font face. Like, let's do, we'll do this one. And then you can change the size, bold, italicized, color. And then if you hit this little heart right here, look, it added one to the end. Now I have six, seven. I have seven custom default font sizes. You guys, <laughs> that was the thing that I loved about Notability. Note Shelf one-upped it, okay? That's freaking awesome. So, okay, in this one, for us digital planners to import something, you would hit this plus sign over here on the left, and then you have the option to do a photo with your camera, or when you accidentally hit that and you get the shot right up your nose of the most unflattering angle ever, um, you can do your photo library, you can do emojis, which I thought was really funny. I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know. We'll bring in this octopus. And then look, you touch and it makes a bunch of octopuses. Is octopuses the correct phrase? I wonder if I can resize them. Oh, I can. Oh, they don't like it though. Go away, giant octopus. Okay, anyways, now that we have played with the emojis. So with this one, it has the option to record audio just like Notability did. But what this one does different is when you save something... It has this whole tab for saved recordings, which is really cool because with the other one, you had one shot, like you recorded one thing per book. It wasn't even like per slide. So this one you can do multiples, which I think is really, really neat. And then you also have stock images. And the cool thing about this, you guys, and obviously take this with a grain of salt, you can look from Pixabay or Unsplash, right? Now, typically, these two sites are royalty-free. Obviously, be cautious with what you're looking at because if someone draws a picture of Shrek, this is always my example, somebody draws a picture of Shrek, 
uploads it to Pixabay and you use that picture, you can do that. DreamWorks will tell you no. But like people who do photography and take photos, like look at, here's all these little vector images. How cute are these? Illustrations. So we'll bring in, let's see, these music notes. And look at their transparent backgrounds. So, okay, here's the thing that almost got me before. If I shrink this down, see it stops right here, right? It will not go smaller than that. Now, if you have a planner table or like an overlay or even like a regular digital planner, some of these boxes are small, right? So you need to be able to fit your stickers into that space. With this app, this is kind of like in GoodNotes, how it's got its little quirks that you have to learn to work around. I discovered this by accident. So this is as small as it's going to let me do this, right? But if I click off of it, I still have the marquee tool selected. If I tap it or rather circle it and hit resize, now it'll let me make it smaller. So when it does that, when you do that, though, it does degrade the quality slightly. But then just like GoodNotes, it'll pop it back in in as much as it can when you unselect it. So that's a big score, you guys. That it was almost a deal breaker when I was looking at this the first go around, you know, like an hour ago. But now that I've seen the fix, I know how to fix it. I'm like, yes. And here's the next big thing that this app does. Oh, I forgot to show you. If you go to insert from, then you can pull from your uh, your cloud or your um, Dropbox or uh, Google Drive, whatever. So we're just going to pull one from in here. We'll get these flowers. So check this out, right? I have the little octopus under here. I can tap this with a marquee tool. Send it to back. This is how Notability should have handled their layering. They didn't do it this way, and it showed in the um, testing, I guess. This is how it should be done. So I can tap this octopus, hit bring to front, and then just drag this little dude over here. And there you go. Bring to front. Oh, I missed him. Come on, buddy. Now, if I want to um, change, like, his orientation, I would just circle, resize, and then it would give me the little um, rotate tool. And this one does do 90-degree snaps, so that's super handy. And one thing I like about this one is the snap feature is not intrusive. Like, some apps, if you're even close to it, it's just going to go, and it's you can't do just, like, a slight curvature on something well with this one you can it's only going to auto snap when you get really close like within 10 degrees of that line so super super handy and very well done for that so what else do we got let's see oh with this one i did check you can export your um book or your planner see i'm gonna you know what i'll just do this page current i'm gonna do note shelf format I'm going to name it something else, test square, share now, and then I'm just going to save to files so that I know where to find it. And then watch. If I go to this plus, import, oops, that was photo, import document. Uh, I think I stuck it in here, test square. Okay, so here's the file I did, right? Check this out. You can make sticker books with this app. Now, back, back in my day, when I started digital planning, GoodNotes was the only app available that made its own proprietary file type that would let you create movable PNG sticker books. Well, now they're pretty much all doing it that I've tested recently. This one does. Notability does. Zoom Notes, I believe, does. Obviously, GoodNotes does. So they're stepping up their game. But here's the, here's the kicker, you guys, okay? Here's the kicker. And this is, this is a very difficult thing for me to say. I need a minute, okay? I need a minute. This app, this 
Note Shelf app, it might be better than Good Notes. <gasps> and you know that's a lot for me to say, but all the stuff that it does, it does so freaking well. Like, seriously, it. Uh, and I didn't even show you this feature because it really doesn't apply to me and the way I plan. But this does hyperlinks, too. So if you had a hyperlinked planner, which I don't have here because, I, again, I don't really use them very much. Um, I did import one earlier when I did my first test. And the only thing that I didn't like about it what damn it, I'm going to have to show you because you need to understand how annoying it was. So I'm going to go import document. And I think this is in Google Drive. Yep, there it is. Okay, so this is a planner that I made a while back that is hyperlinked, right? So you can tell Note, note Shelf, Note Shelf, you can tell Note Shelf under gestures to disable hyperlinks when you're in writing mode. So you don't accidentally click a link when you're trying to write something, which I absolutely turned on because that was happening and it was pissing me off. But even still, like, look, I can write this. This pen color, I, I can't. That's so gross. But I can write, and this these rows all have hyperlinks in them. But if I go to the marquee tool, it's still trying to select them. If you don't... Oh, I went for it. If you do just a single tap, it's going to do it. Now, it would make more sense if it would only... Just like GoodNotes, if it would only acknowledge the hyperlinks if you were had the uh, like read only mode turned on but it's not it's even in this mode it'll still I don't know if this one has a link on it it might not see it'll still go so that's kind of a pain in the butt um, if you were like laying down stickers and trying to sort stuff out because look I'll bring a sticker in here maybe oh yeah here we go Okay, let's, these aren't stickers. These aren't stickers either. There we go. Okay, we'll bring in one of these. So if I bring in this sticker here, right, and I put it like right there, and then I want to move it, so I pick my marquee tool again. Oh, I still haven't selected. See, it's trying to go to where the link is instead of picking the sticker. But where, okay. But if you take your marquee tool and just like do this number, then you can move it. But that's kind of a pain in the ass if you have like stickers that are layered right there. Again, this is like, like I said before, the you learn the quirks of the app you're working with. And this one for me is not a deal breaker because again, I don't use links when I'm planning. So this is like, I don't need to worry about that at all. So all in all, I will say this app it's got it's got a lot in its corner the default text options the um layering capabilities i'm like oh man oh man like my if i had to put like good notes in this pile note shelf in this pile they're pretty damn neck and neck and i'll tell you this the thing that is pushing me more towards good notes is just the fact that I've been using it for so long and all of my files that I already have are already good notes files so like making the the leap would be a real it would take a lot of time to like move everything over but I'm not gonna lie you guys this is pretty banging I do want to actually if you pull It'll create another page, by the way. However, it does not, it only um, recognizes the shape of your document. It does not create a new page. To create a new page, you go to this thing here and then pick, oh, balls, and then hit edit, select, and then down here is duplicate. That's how you would do that. Okay, so if I go into Good Notes, this isn't going to work. So I don't know why I'm like nervous. So I just copied a lot of stuff. I don't even know if I can. Oh, I'm on the text tool. Hold on. Oh, it's trying to do. There we go. Paste. That's what I thought. Okay. It it doesn't 
like I could do them individually one at a time. And then let me see if I could do no, that's not gonna work either. So just copy. Oh, paste is not as intuitive as you would think. Come on, buddy. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So, yeah, that does work. I do want to test. I didn't test this before. Let me go to my Photos app. Okay, I don't have anything in here. Okay. So, if I open her here, split screen. No, that's good notes again. Get it together. Split screen with photos. I want to see because in Good Notes you can just grab and like stick in there. Yep, you can do it here too. That's really cool. So I could just grab on the photos side, drag over, and then. Okay, so it it does. It functions just like Good Notes does. It's it's close, guys. It is close. It's really close. So I'm going to say anybody who uses this app on the regular, Jillian, I believe you do. What was the catalyst that made you say, okay, this is better than good notes? Because for me, I'm looking at it as the text options are pretty banging, especially for me, because I use a lot of text and then the um, layering options. I'm like, yes, please. So, like, fill me in. What is the, what's the draw? What makes this your app of choice? Because I'm really curious why people choose this one over the other one. I mean, I have my, my thoughts as to why I might consider it. But I want to know what you guys think. So, yeah, that's, that's going to be it for me. Let me know what you guys think about this app in the comments. Um, I am going to keep playing with it. I'm toying with the idea of doing my May planning in this app by itself. We'll see how it goes. All right, you guys have an awesome, awesome day, and I will see you next time. Bye.